Hey, this is Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in today's video, we're going to look at uh, edge finding using a wiggler. So the wiggler is a very useful tool. Um, it's kind of an old school way of uh, of doing edge finding or center finding, and there's lots of different tips and uh, attachments that you can use. I was using it uh, this past week to uh, pick up. Um, the edge of the part that I was machining, and I thought I'd shoot some quick video on it. Uh, come to find out, uh, as soon as I did that, um, uh, Keith Rucker uh, from uh, Vintage Machinery, he also uh, did a, a real brief one on, on using a, a wiggler for, um, he was using it in a um, in, the, in the lathe, but um, using it uh, the same way, and I'm trying to remember if he did it in the mill as well, but uh, I, I remember I just kind of thought it was funny that in the same time frame that I was I was doing something about it, uh, he was using it too. So it's still a very widely used method, uh, both in manual uh, and uh, in, in CNC work. But uh, you know, there there's some very fancy edge finders out there that help you do these things. Um, but the wiggler, you, know, you can you can pick them up cheap. There you find them all over on eBay. I've got a few different sets that I use, and um, they're they're actually rather accurate if you use them right. So let's take a look at that and. Uh, I'll bring you back in a minute. Hey, just a quick uh, note on uh, edge finding. So I lost my zero on, on doing this part, and I need to pick it up again. And one of the things that uh, I do on this one, I've got, I like this particular wiggler. I mean, I've got different edge finders. And I don't have one of the fancy heimers where I can just come in and touch off and do all this stuff. I have to do it manually still. And uh, you know, I've got a lot of manual tools, manual machining tools. Um, this is really the only CNC machining tool that I have, uh, other than the plasma cutter. But it doesn't—it's not quite the same. Right? So, um, you know, I use a wiggler. This particular one, um, you know, I've got a couple of different ones. I've got some that are ball. I've got some that are point. I really like this one because it's a combination of a ball and a point on it. Um, let me just double check something here. Probably not. Yeah. Okay. So, it's a uh, quarter inch. So, you know, you've got a couple of options on setting your, your zero, right? So let's let's take a look at this real quick. Um, first thing we do, we get it going. And it's wiggling around, right? Uh, I've seen people use wrenches, right? And go in and straighten it that way. I find that I, I don't get quite the same result. I like to use my Sharpie. And I come in with my Sharpie and just real gently. I feel like I get a little bit more control over what I'm doing. Which, did you guys see that or did it go completely out of focus? It went completely out of focus. Let's try it again. I'll knock it out. Alright, I take my Sharpie. I come in and I just start working my way down. Down to that point. And I feel like I get really good control over it. And the other part that I want to do on this with my Sharpie anyways, is I'm going to put some gluing on that ball. Because we're going to show both, turn this off, we're going to show both using the ball method and the point. Now a lot of people when they're using the ball method, they'll go until it flips out. It's really um, not necessary. You put a little gluing fluid on here, you know, dicum, whatever. You touch off on this thing, and basically you, you move over until until that part actually scrapes off the blue, right? You don't want to go so far that it flips it off, just enough so that it scrapes off the blue. And the other thing is on this point, you can take that point and line it up. And actually that's the way that I will do this, is I will come up to this corner here and I'll get this point right on that corner and uh, we'll go from there. So let me get a couple of things started and I'll bring you right back. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. Um, let's just get things kind of close. Let me bring my zero down, my Z down. Bring my X over. We'll bring the Y. And I'm just going to bring my Z down to the, to the middle of the part here. And then I'm going to switch over to jaw or step mode right, so that I can. I'll get it close. Move it in tan thing commands. Alright, so now I'm going to switch over to, um, to 1000s. Get the spindle, run him. 
it's still nice and trued up. And what we're watching for is a line to show up on the ball. Let me see if I can bring you in closer on that. Sorry, let's see if I can bring you in nice and close on that ball. So you can see what I'm looking for here. Start coming over 1,000th at a time. All right, we're getting closer. All right, now we're, we're pretty close here. So, two thousand, two thousand one more. There. Well, I probably went 1,000 too far, but that's my zero. Right. So I went probably a thousand too far on that. So I'm gonna set it to zero. That's my uh, my X zero. I'm gonna jog out. And there's ten thousands. I'm just gonna jog out. Let's see if I can set this again. No, I'm still too close. Watching for that line to show up. We go one thousand at a time. We should get really close here. See in the reflection from my angle that we're almost touching. And actually, I can see the line starting to show up. I don't know if you guys can see it there. I can see it. I think this next thousand might actually throw it off. Yeah. All right. So I've got a, I've got a clear line on that. I don't know if it's if it's you can see it or not. If it's focusing. On. See if it'll focus for you. Yeah, I don't think I've got enough light on it for it to focus. Let me see if I can get you some more light. Alright, you can kind of see the line showed up. So at that point, so it was about 2000 uh, um, before. Uh, yeah, it was about two thousandths earlier than what I had zeroed it out. But technically that's not zero, right? What that is, is that's 125 thousandths over. It's half this distance. Right, so I'm going to say that this is actually point one two five in the positive... Are we in positive or are we in negative? I think here. That's zero. It must be in the negative direction here. All right, negative 0.125, enter. All right, now let's bring the Z up. And what I'm actually gonna try and do is get that Z really, really close to the top of the surface here. Because what I wanna do is go to job mode. That should be zero according to the DRO, and I am right on it, which is perfect, right? So let's go now. Let's pick up our Y, our Y zero. And then we're just tracing along that line. Let's zoom out a little bit so you guys can actually see it a little more closely. And I'm just going in ten thousand increments until I get close, and then I'll 
pick up the y zero. But it's just tracing right along that line. So we're in good shape there. So this is using the point method now. You can get very, very close to being right on that corner. Um, I'm going to set that at zero, but I'm going to change my jog mode. So I'm close there. And what I do is I actually, I come at it from a couple of different angles. I'll look at it from this angle here. And from 90 degrees away, I need to come over there. And I'm still looking pretty good on my X0. All right, I'm going to call that XY0. So using a wiggler, I'm able to come in zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see I picked up my XY0 nice and simple so aside from using the wiggler to find the corner of my point um, as you might have seen in uh, one of the other videos on the mill uh, I was losing my XY position and I mentioned it in here that I had lost my XY position um, and I had to actually pick up a, a new point to use for my XY position and again, great tool for this because I was able to zero in on a sharp corner, another another place uh, that was in the part that had already been cut, and it was uh, it, it enabled me to salvage the part. So again, this simple tool did a great job of keeping uh, keeping things going. Okay, so what I ended up doing because I lost my zero at some point along the way is I ended up creating a new work coordinate system that I could zero off of what's already cut. So that's the important part. I'm trying not to scrap this piece. Um, it is... Away. Yeah, it's almost done at this point. So... I basically came up with a new work coordinate system so I can try and match this up. And that's pretty darn close for what I want to do. Um, the reason why I've been losing it, losing my coordinates, is with that. Uh, with the vice on the way that I had it. It's all over the place, right? Um, and I keep, I'm hitting my X and Y, or I'm hitting my Y limits, right? This doesn't have a whole, a very deep depth of cut here. I'm gonna try to get the depth of cut. It doesn't have a deep travel. And um, so what I did is, actually I've got some, you know, I've got uh, a, uh, can't see it, but there's a uh, parallel behind it, holding it in place so it can't twist. And then I've got the ends uh, going. So we'll go ahead, you know what, I'm going to move the parallel, uh, we'll get the cutting tool in place, uh, but I'm going to zero X and Y here, and we'll cut this last part, and I think we're ready to go. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for all the new subscribers. There's uh, been several new subscribers since uh, in the past week or so. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I I'm always uh, open for suggestions. And if you do have uh, any uh, recommendations or requests for something you'd like to see. Um, again, feel free to contact me. My email is always at the end of my videos. Uh, I, it's an open book, so please uh, reach out. Uh, I'll do my best. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again soon.